and some cool stuff. Ooh, ooh, I like that. It's good stuff. I like that. Mr. G here today. We're gonna go into a conversation I was having with a friend of mine, Coach Hill, as we talk about some awesome shoes that he works on. All right, so how many times have you guys gone down a feed, you have art friends that you hang out with, that you talk to, and you see some of the stuff that they're producing, you're like, I need to know how they made that. And I had the same experience with one of my um, guys that I work with, uh, Coach Hill, teaches at another school that's uh, nearby to me. So let me introduce you guys to Coach Hill. He does some awesome art with his class. One of the things that he's doing is he does a Vans shoe design where he's actually de designing the shoes and how he does that in his side of his classroom what what's that what first uh good to see you i mean we haven't seen each other since i mean i know since like when, when was the last time we actually had a meeting where we actually could sit down this is so weird just not yeah not convincing. do you think that doing something like this often would be beneficial to us not only as um creatures of collaboration we have to talk to one another in general yeah. but you think that it that professionally it helps us but also mentally is that going to help us especially with especially yes it would and especially with this whole concept of them wanting us to collaboratively plan or collaborate with with people and then the number of schools that only have one of you in the building it's like you look around like who do i collaborate with <laughs> so let's let's get into this project so this this project that you did first off um where did the idea come from because you show you you did the shoes in the feed and that really sparked the conversation because we've been isolated but like the i love that artwork right all right so it it, it was birthed out of rona you know especially in the spring of it when we were first in the thick of it and nobody was going anywhere. Like you didn't, you didn't even want to go get gas. <laughs> so um, every year before that, uh, my school, we I would enter my school in the Vans off the wall contest. So what Vans would do, Vans would send you four pair of um, all white, uh, styles of their sh of their like I guess top top selling shoes like the the authentic the old school the skater high top and the slip on right so I had some of them still at the house and they happened to be in the size that my son wears now so I was like would you like me to do something on these shoes because I was literally bored I was like and especially since the teaching was all asynchronous too you know even now we don't get that many students to talk back with but you know, it was totally not talking to nobody unless they messaged you in Verge or something like that. It was just like, I'm got to go crazy. So I started doing some stuff. So I'll show you. I started doing some stuff, just playing around with some other acrylics for my son. You know, making some things for him. Started out with the Adventure Time ones. It was like pulling teeth sometimes to get ideas from them. I started out with these doing a little uh, hydro dip where um the spray paint you know you spray you know you lay out some colors in the spray paint mask off which you don't want the paint to adhere to and then you dip the shoes and then i i use some just some basic acrylics to finish painting out the rest and these have held up well but uh what i found out though is the way i use you know just the basic acrylics it's it's not stiff stiff but it doesn't feel canvas flexible gotcha like the canvas shoes, so it fe it feels more like, uh, not totally like a leather shoe to feel, but kind of in between what canvas and the leather. If leather had a child, kind of that kind of stiffness. It's a whole new thing. I love yeah. it. So, so then as you know, as I'm doing my research and experiment and come across these are some other ones I deal with them. Uh, these are these are hydro dip too. So hydro dip has some cool effects, but then sometimes it's an inexact science because if the paint doesn't kind of collect in one area, these white spots are kind of where there was more, the paint didn't kind of close like that. There was water right there. 
So that's actually the shoe where you see coming through right in there. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, it creates some cool effects, but you know, it's still an inexact science doing a hydro dip. Because I was wondering about that when I was, because I, me and you were talking and I started researching it. Do you use just water and you were just spray painting the top surface? Yeah. Or did you thicken up the water? Because that was like the one thing that I kept seeing is you thicken the water and I was trying to figure out what chemical I could use. No, I just use, I just use straight cold water. Okay. And it worked right. fine. That's good. Yeah. And then, you know, if you get a, what what is good to do is make get one of those the, the paint plus the primer. This way, this keeps you from sometimes having to spray it in the first place with primer. If you get the the paint plus the primer ones, those are pretty good. But then I kind of moved away a little bit from the hydro dipping, and then I came along um, just doing some research actually on Amazon, thinking about stuff. I came along this brand, acrylic leather paint. Yeah, Angelus. Nice. So Angelus and they, uh, Angelus, and I've been with them since. I ordered some sets off um, Amazon, but they do have an actual website. But it, it's easier and faster just to get it from Amazon. Uh, unless I'm looking for a specific color or something, then I might go straight to them. But, um, and I found it extremely versatile. Now, did you, have you taught this lesson like this in class or what did you because you you no. taught the vans thing before no when when because okay. the van the vans were kind of like um the whole process with the vans off the wall it was real organic and artsy students could basically do anything to the shoes they could adhere and glue stuff to it and then what would happen is your shoe your school is in a region and if you place i think top 50 out the region and you move on to nationals or something like that and then the winning school shoes, um, Van finds a way to assimilate that design to something more functionable and wearable. Nice. Okay. Yeah, because each shoe had to have a theme. It had to be like, uh, and it was based on the culture of the area you lived in. So it had, one was, I think, city theme or culture or something, music, arts, and I think one got to be kind of, miscellaneous or something like that and it didn't matter which shoe you did it on but those were like the four themes for the shoes they sent you gotcha now so, yeah go ahead yeah because so some of my students would do you know would do color pencil on them because it's a white canvas you know so it didn't so so that particular part no like i, I like all this and how i kind of developed my own process came under quarantine now would you do this in class like let's say next year or Yes, I uh, one of those things I was thinking about was um, doing something like this for shoe design. And then I actually have some students that actually, before we went under quarantine and virtual, I actually had like two or three students that you know I encouraged to start making some money because they would they would uh, start designing stuff. Um, like people would give them their denim jackets to do something on or their shoes and stuff too. So, you know, taking what I know even more now and showing them how they can better what they're doing. Yeah. Then how would this be? The only other big question is, then how would you modify this for the virtual learner? Because are you going to teach it this term or? No, I want to teach it this term. Uh, it may be something I introduce the next school year. Uh, I would rather do it either in my advanced AP class or my painting class since we could stay with it longer because, it. you know, for painting class, because it's painting and, you know, the advanced class, it'd be maybe a cool way to uh, use a different surface to get their idea down on or something like that. But just because we could stay with it longer, I'd probably do it with one of those two. And then plus those kids. I'd have more kids that have been with me longer, so it would be, quote unquote, more worth my mental grief. <laughs> rather than like I, rather than like the visual art where you just get some a lot of randoms thrown in there and you're like, I'm not stressing myself out. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. A VA one class cannot do this. No, yeah, I'm like, I'm not stressing. 
but yeah, because <laughs> and I that's something most teachers don't get. I think I think you have to be in in the arts to or um or even even in the middle school level where you have that kid sixth, seventh, and eighth, and like they come back in eighth grade, you've had them two years prior only for like a, like nine week sessions, but you still have there's a um, something built up over those years. Yeah, because the the year round core teachers, no, the, <laughs> we're just trying to make it through the year. Um, but yeah, totally, yeah, totally agree with you there. The examples that were that people can catch this at is definitely on your Instagram. I'm gonna put that in the description below, and I'll have some pictures in here as well so that people can see uh, the work because you had you had several that that I'm, I'm following and just the colors were phenomenal they just pop so much yeah so so what happens like i said with the paints i use they come in like you know they're they're regular primary colors right come in their regular primary colors yellow oranges but they have other colors and they're really they're really easy to mix too um and what I did, my whole process, and like I said, they're versatile. So if I'm working on a leather shoe, uh, the whole process with that is, uh, you know, and the Angelus has their own products and stuff. But basically, if you use like a, a nail polish remover, right? And the area that you plan on painting on that leather shoe, you just take like a sponge and then you're basically prepping the surface to kind of get that factory finish off the shoe so the paint will adhere better i uh, think that's that's something i didn't even thought of is so what kind of stuff are they putting on the surface of it in general is it just like a waterproofing i'm not even sure i didn't dig that deep i don't know if it's just uh a normal finish that you would put like even if it was on a leather sofa or something you know just to help the leather last longer you know, I don't even know, but just so the paint would be more adherent to the actual leather itself. Um, you kind of just, you know, you don't have to do no big scrubbing process, but just, you know, a light wipe off so you can get that uh, factory finish off for the area that you're going to paint on. Yeah, it sounds like whatever we would do if we were normally spray painting something, you want to rough up that top surface just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so that and then also invested in the dipping cups so if i'm mixing a color and i want to keep it or if i'm working on something um that i want to hold on to longer like if, if it's taking me a, a while then I, I mix my paints in the little dipping cups so those order, come in handy. Order, order a bunch of those off amazon <laughs> <laughs> and then we all have a love affair with amazon at this point yes me and my wife look at each other every time something comes to the house like who, what you do? I didn't do nothing this time. That's you. I know that's you. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you're working on a shoe that's that's leather, then you can use the paint straight out the bottle. Or like if you mix it with a color, you can use the paint straight on. Uh, Cause it, it was, it's primarily designed to adhere to leather. Uh, if you're working on a canvas shoe, like I got right here. Yeah, this is the one style he didn't like. So I didn't I never painted these ones. This is the one style he didn't like. So, but if you're working on a leather shoe and then preparing a leather surface is a lot easier. Just want to make sure it's not dusty. And then if you see any like really loose threads, you might want to take uh an exacto knife and just kind of scrape along the surface. But the leather, you know, the canvas shoes are are a lot you know, less pre-prep work because it's almost just like painting straight on the canvas. Uh, but and it, and if you want the let if you want the canvas to still feel more canvassy when you're done, uh, what you do with the paint, you mix I think like two parts, two parts paint or or one on one depending on how thin you want the paint. Um, they have a product called Too Soft. Okay, um, another version of it, if you don't go get it from them, is the GAC nine hundred Golden Two. Okay. And when you mix that with the color, it softens the paint and then it needs to be heat set. So what I use, what I, two things I've done, I either use, I bought one of those like little mini heat guns as I'm working, but you can also, uh, some dryers have that. I don't know if you have one. My dryer does. It has that, 
that tray that you can insert into the into the dryer. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I put this. I sometimes I put the shoes on there and just run the just so they don't tumble. And yeah. I run it so I run the dry I run the dryer on like medium heat for maybe 30, 40 minutes just so it'll heat set and then it'll start and then the shoe will actually feel more like the natural canvas it will. It'll still be loose and flexible, just like canvas. It just needs to be heat set once you use the two saw. Um so that's for that. And then if there's hard places like the eyelets that you want to paint and you don't want the paint just to slip off. They got another thing called too hard that you mix with the paint that helps it adhere to harder surfaces like plastics and metals if that happens to be on the shoe. Gotcha. Good stuff, man. I love I love that project. That and is then awesome. vinyl, vinyl tape. Not not um not uh what's it say? Not duct tape, vinyl tape, and a good masking tape or painter's tape. Is also good too for blocking out air. The vinyl tape is good when uh, I like the vinyl tape more than the masking tape when it comes to masking off the sole. Okay. The, the vinyl tape will actually mold along when you're wrapping it around, and then it won't. You know, unlike you know, unlike duct tape, won't leave that nasty, sticky film. Um, but what I also found in my time that if if it does have a little stickiness to it, WD-40. Oh. A little, so w, a little WD-40 on the rag and just, you know, or, you know, or if you got a little gooby on or something, but WD-40 was around the house and just kind of wipe any place that feels a little stickiness after you use. And it really, it depends on how long you leave the vinyl on there. Usually, That's usually if, you, if, 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 it, if you're working on it and the area that you didn't want to touch the sole, you're kind of done with, and you take it off. There's really nothing there. But if you leave it on for, like, like you left it on all week or something like that, you may have to touch it up because there may be a few sticky spots on the sole. But nothing compared to like if you try to do this with duct tape, that's that's a whole nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something that I, I don't think the kids even think about. It's like we're we're gonna block it off and. Yeah, the masking tape, you're going to have those bleed effects uh, from that. And then uh, duct tape, yeah, it's just you need that middle ground to the vinyl one. Nice duct yeah. stuff. So the masking tape comes in good, like if you're working more on the surface of the shoe. Like the masking tape is good if I'm blocking off something on the surface of the shoe, whether it's canvas or um, leather. The vinyl is just good, like when you're trying to mask off. Like I, I've used both. I've used the vinyl where the the shoe meets the sole, but depend you know because I got a thin got a thin strip. But then I may do the rest of the sole in the masking tape. But just that just that connection between the shoe and and the, you know and the sole, I may use the vinyl to mask off right there. But gotcha. then the rest of the shoe, you know, I use that. And then you know I I usually after I'm done, I usually spray with. A good uh, weather proofer. Uh, the, sh the the paint itself is really durable, but you know, just for that added touch, I'll, I'll spray it with a good weather proofer, or they do have, uh, or maybe you know, depending on if I want the shoe to have a little gloss on it, I may use a matte or a semi gloss like acrylic finisher over top, and that sets really well, sets real evenly. Yes. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I, I love this brand of paint because uh, it also stays flexible. Like as long as you kind of do the, the prep work and stuff like that, it stays and, you know, you work more in layers and not get too uh, impatient and try to cake it on there. It stays really flexible and durable for wear and tear and stuff like that. And that's important, I think, because, you know, when we're painting, like if I'm using a watercolor, I know which watercolor paints are going to be better for the type of paper that we use. I don't think that, it, especially for students, they're not thinking about the grounds that we're painting on. If they're painting on paper, if they're painting on canvas, if they're painting on cardboard, they're doing plywood even, uh, mm -hmm. because canvas is going to have its own, how is this thing going to adapt and change over time? Whereas if it's a canvas, it just sits on the wall. This is going to move and shift. And, yeah. uh, and I, 
I don't think people are going to think about that when they're like, yeah, let's just spray paint it. Let's just do this. They don't think about what it's going to, why is it cracking in three days after you did it? Oh, it's your mind. This paint is also good. Um, I haven't experimented with it yet, but I bought, um, another thing I bought on Amazon was like one of these uh, little portable, small kind of hobby uh, air paint, air paint guns. So I bought like one of these off Amazon. It's about, I think, fifty or just a, just around sixty bucks. So the air compressor and this, and oh, you can compressor. Yeah. Oh wow, that thing's tiny. Yeah. So it's good. It's good for like small hobby stuff. Like you wouldn't be trying to go out and spray paint a whole wall with this or something. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, I haven't experimented with it yet, but they have another product that's called Too Thin, which helps thin out the paint for application for airbrushing. Brushes. Yeah, brushes. What kind of brushes we got? Uh, it all depends on what you're doing, how big you're doing it, you know, just like with anything you paint. Uh, oh. Larger areas are good, you know, good. As long as it's something soft. And not stiff, even if it's synthetic. As long as it's something soft, that'll work. Uh, I prefer synthetic brushes to natural hair brushes only because you don't have that random hair that you find on the on the surface because it's shedded. <laughs> oh no, I I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> you're looking, thinking you're all done, and you'd be like, "Why is there a hair there?" And sometimes you don't find it till it's dried into the paint, and you're like. Yep. And then some smaller, like detail hobby brushes, some liners and stuff like that for thinner, smaller places. But are those royal? They look like royal brushes. These are no, my Artscape. Okay. Yeah. I love royal. Just they're they're dirt cheap and they last they last pretty long. Yeah. You know, it's just like I said, this has helped like there's a lot of things that I got out of this. The teaching aspect has been frustrating, but there's a lot of other things that I've gotten out of this that I'm going to do going forward in some fashion. Like I said, as far as disseminating information to the kids, uh, a lot of times, even how I may have them submit work, because there's always been that um, that tug and pull for students, especially if they do something really cool. I said, well, let me hold on to it to the end of the semester, because you know I do my end of the semester display. Yep. You know, and then sometimes depending on how the school decides to close out the semester, you don't get to connect with that student to give the work back to them. And it's like, uh, so, you know, even with how they submit work, it may still like I still may end up taking physical work. But um, and I may I may only end up taking physical work that I may want to either display or hang up. But for the populace. I may still require them to do it digitally because if the work isn't up to par, then this way I don't have to worry about holding on to it or if the student decides to trash it themselves, at least I still got the image for grading and record keeping and stuff like that. So, and just like I said, the whole, the whole art history piece, finding different ways and art criticism too, finding different ways to get the kids to talk about art in different ways. Um, has been good too so there's some and that just make my lot job a little easier because a lot of times the way we've done it we've you know we created some worksheet or some doc that the kids had to fill out or some some way that you want them to design their sketchbook to do the information but some of it uh has been a lot easier i'll let you go mainly because <laughs> My phone keeps getting blown up between emails and yeah, I've had two emails. <laughs> <laughs> we but we got it we gotta do this more often. I definitely think this is beneficial to all of us. Um if you wanted to do this and like we could do like a, a chat again or or uh, something else, because I would love to pick your brain too about sketchbooks because I'm I'm bad on on how I do sketchbooks. I know I I see all these awesome pictures of people who have these like really brilliant sketchbooks. I'm like, I just I just don't I don't know how to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, because yeah, um, um, my weekly sketchbook assignments are just open ended prompts, yeah, 
And the it, it blows the kids' minds. Like I get the one that always asks me every week, "What am I supposed to do with this?" I said, and I tell them, I said, "You tell me." <laughs> I was like, I told you there. I said, think about your lit class. Your lit teacher gives you a prompt on the board, and you're supposed to write about it. In this class, I'm giving you a prompt. You're supposed to create a visual, your visual response to this prompt. I said, if it's an artist's name, you may have to look up the artist if you're not familiar with. If it's just a phrase or a word, you don't know the word, dictionary time. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what you want me to do. This ain't going to be like the week lesson where you get detailed instruction. This is where I need you to activate your own brain because I want to see everybody's independent solution to this problem I'm posing to you. Exactly. But good talking with you. Thanks for... Uh, hanging out today, and we'll talk oh, again no soon. Problem. Like I said, best use of my Wednesday since the school year started. <laughs> uh, all right, I'll catch you later, man. Keep it all right. keep making art. See you. Got you. Awesome, guys. I hope that you guys got something awesome out of today's class with Coach Hill. Again, I just love talking with, with friends, and I love getting guys' information of new, from friends of mine just so we can keep the ball rolling, keep things interesting. So let's go ahead and close out today's class as we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms, trying to get the message out to as many students and teachers as we possibly can, trying to educate the masses. And then uh, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern today, don't forget to raise those hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. And as always, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys.